What started as a crowded field of 10 eventually became five. Tonight, it's down to just one. Tudor Dixon winning the Republican gubernatorial primary, and she will face off against Governor Gretchen Whitmer come November. Glad you're with us for Local 4 News at 11 on this primary night. Dixon's victory coming just a few days after she, of course, received former President Donald Trump's endorsement, which perhaps helped separate her a bit from the field. Right, and this is just one of several races we are following tonight. In Oakland County, it was Democratic incumbent versus Democratic incumbent with Congresswoman Haley Stevens declaring victory tonight over Congressman Andy Levin, who conceded about 15 minutes or so ago. In the newly drawn 13th district, Detroit is set to get a new representative for Congress, but as you can see, and this, these are the first numbers that we've seen all yeah. night, the results yeah. just have been trickling out of Wayne County. It is going to be a while before a winner is declared. This is with just 1% of the vote counted so far. Mm -hmm. So these are the earliest of early numbers uh, in a race that it's taken us till 11 o'clock at night to get any totals at all in the 13th district primary. Yeah. Okay. In the 12th congressional Democratic primary, Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib has been in uh, the front of the field all night here, but the race remains uh, too early to call. This is the seat that opened up, of course, when Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence announced her retirement. We've got team coverage coming up on this primary night. Grant Herms is tracking the results uh, as we get them. But first, let's head to Grand Rapids where Mara McDonald joins us now. We just heard uh, from Tudor Dixon, Mara. Devin, let me tell you what's remarkable about tonight. It is not that Tudor Dixon won this primary. It is the margin that she is winning this primary by. You know, since those original results started churning out of Oakland County first, the margin has been at times more than 20 percent, but currently at about 20 percent by any measure. That is a complete drubbing and should show everybody what the value of a Donald Trump endorsement is in a Michigan GOP primary. Now, already Dixon taking this stage tonight. She's pivoting to the general election. Take a listen. We have all suffered because Gretchen Whitmer's policy stopped us from doing what the people of Michigan do best, from providing for our families, strengthening our communities, working hard and every day working to make Michigan the best place in the world to live. Back here live, all of this setting up what is going to be a historic gubernatorial contest between two women for the first time helming both major parties. We're live in Grand Rapids tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Okay. All right, Mara, so on we go. Yeah. Whitmer versus Dixon. That's right, and the Whitmer campaign has already released this statement in response to Tudor Dixon's primary victory. It reads in part, quote, while Dixon has focused her campaign on attracting support from special interests, and political insiders, Governor Whitmer has been working to earn support from Michiganders by doing what she has always done, working with anyone to get things done, end quote. Our Grant Herms has been tracking the major races all night long, too. Let's check in with Grant with uh, some of the vote totals we're watching, not just across Metro Detroit, but statewide. But, but statewide, here. we're going to start with the race for governor here on the GOP side. All that green here you're seeing, that is Tudor Dixon winning all these counties very handily. A couple here for Garrett Soldano, here for Kevin Rinke, but this is the margin that Mara was talking about here. If we're going to go in down to the Metro Detroit area, Oakland County, the big one where Kevin Rinke was going to have to make those inroads but did not make them tonight. That is wider than the statewide average. That's really where Dixon is buttering her bread here. Livingston County, 44% to 20% there, 50% in Washtenaw County. In Wayne, very, very early totals here in Wayne. Things just slowly coming in on, as you heard at the beginning of our hour here. 47% though here up in Macomb, sta like staunchly Republican here. You can see that Tudor Dixon here, 44% to 26%. We want to back out and head over to the Levin Stevens race. The first time Michigan is not going to have 11 in Washington, D.C. in 54 years. That is the new 11th district here. Stevens calling it for herself early on tonight. Levin conceding just a few minutes ago. 60-40 here. A big brand new district here. Oddly enough, shaped like an elephant, even though that's not the race we're talking about here. <laughs> but a lot of money. So a lot of things to watch here. A lot of money pouring into this race. APAC, the conservative pro-Israel PAC, backing Haley Stevens to the tune of two and a half million dollars. Levin getting his own from J Street, the more liberal pro-Israel PAC here, but just not enough to overcome here. So a lot of changes in Oakland County here. I want to take you also down to the 13th. We got some of those early numbers here, just 1% in, but this is a really interesting race to watch. Maybe one of the only districts where Detroit would have a black member of Congress, maybe not even if you Look at some of these races coming in, just a 1% here. Also over in the new 10th, 
Carl Marlinga here on the Democratic side likely going to be the nominee here, but really it's over in the Republican side. John James taking this one. Now, the Republican Party in Michigan already called this race. It's not been called yet by the AP, but they have congratulated John James on a victory here. But that is a very, very decided margin here. John James also maybe the only other uh, candidate here where a black Republican could be representing at least part of Detroit in this new 10th, and that would make it a Republican black representative, which is something that Detroit has not seen in quite some time, if not ever. If I'm remembering right, Devin, Kimberly, yeah. Uh, yeah in ever, yeah. Uh, and so why don't we back out here, take another look at this governor's race here, and actually I want to take you over to the west side of the state where we are watching this race as well, this John Gibbs, Peter Meyer race. Gibbs has been up for most of the night, just until about 10 minutes ago, Peter Meyer took over here a two-point difference. Democrats have put a bunch of money into the Gibbs side of this, thinking that they might be able to tackle on a, a what they see as a weaker candidate out here to the west. But so far, Peter Meyer, at least at the very latest, taking over the lead here. I'm going to back out to the state level and take you in here one more time to the 12th, which is Rashida Tlaib. That is her new district here after you heard uh, Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence decided to retire and step down. She's got a heavy lead here. That's likely going to be hers, as most pollsters have said so far. But one of the big things here in the governor's race, because I want to go back to this here, Tudor Dixon facing off against Governor Gretchen Whitmer. That, in our last poll, was a 10-point win for Whitmer. That was before the Trump endorsements. We'll see if Republicans fall in line behind Tudor Dixon here in the next 30 days or so. It's not a yeah. lot of time, you guys, for them to get behind Dixon in this race. But a very solid win here across the state. Sure has been. Pretty broad yes. reach. Yep. All right, All right Grant, thanks. Grant, thanks. Uh, shortly after the polls closed, we heard from Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson. Secretary Benson says while the voting is done, poll workers will be counting the more than one million absentee ballots well into the night. Larger jurisdictions are still counting ballots received prior to today, and all jurisdictions with counting boards will receive ballots later this evening because voters have up until or had up until 8 p.m. Eastern or uh, local time today to return them. Once those ballots are all returned, then they are validated at the clerk's office before they are transported to the counting board for processing and counting. This is an important multi-step process and one that we cannot and will not shortcut. Jocelyn Benson talking about uh, the, the job ahead. Uh, the votes have been a little slow to come in here tonight from both uh, Wayne and Macomb County. But joined now by our pollster, Richard Juba. Let's start with the governor's race. Uh, as we said, uh, Tudor Dixon was really starting to surge in those last couple. She had kind of established herself as a leader, and then Donald Trump's endorsement probably put this out of reach for everybody else, right? We've been talking about this for months. Whoever Donald Trump endorsed was likely to win this race. And sure enough, when he endorsed Tudor Dixon, we saw her numbers skyrocket and she's going to pull out an easy win here uh, this is the power of a Trump endorsement uh, also she gives us a pretty good indication in her mar remarks tonight about where this race is going she's going to talk a lot about Governor Whitmer's COVID policies she is and that's interesting uh, it works very well for her Republican base but independents they have moved on in the, this conversation so it's going to be interesting if she pivots beyond that yeah uh, let's talk about the this very unusual situation with two Democratic incumbents against each other uh, Haley Stevens and 11 I don't know that it's a surprise that Haley Stevens Stevens has won this, but the margin is rather glaring. This is a whopping win for Haley Stevens. Uh, you know, she is one of the new, fresh, young faces of Michigan's leadership. Uh, this is a big win, and I, I think we have to watch. Does this show that female candidates, particularly on the Democratic side, are going to surge tonight? That's an interesting thing we need to watch. Uh, also, it uh, does kind of end an era. No leaven in Congress for the first time since 1978. It sure does. I mean, we are seeing a titan name fall in Michigan yeah, tonight. Yeah, sure is. Uh, I also want us to, uh, Grant just took us through a shift in those uh, District 3 numbers, Peter Meyer and John Gibbs. John Gibbs has been leading this race through most of the evening, but now we can see with 60 percent, almost two-thirds of the vote in, Peter Meyer has taken the lead. This is a nail-biter, and I 
during our break, I went and looked at what was still out here. Mm -hmm. uh, Pete Meyer has lost the city of Grand Rapids, which is interesting. Yeah. He is doing well around the ring cities, but the northern townships of Kent County have not come in. That's Trump territory. And the other area that has not come in is Muskegon County, where yeah. Gibbs is going to do very well. And that's why this one is being watched, uh, not just by us in Michigan, but the whole country is Absolutely. watching this race as one of those bellwether races uh, to, dis to show us the impact that Donald Trump's endorsement has. And it's going to be a close race. Yeah, against a guy who voted to impeach him in pretty much his first job, uh, or first uh, d act of duty when he went to Congress. Thanks, Richard. Let's get back to Kimberly. We appreciate that, Richard and Devin. So we will uh, be updating all of our local races throughout the night on our website at clickondetroit.com. And we also have a live interactive map online there so you can track results as we get them into the newsroom. And of course, our Grant Herms will be breaking down all the key races uh, on, ahead on Local 4 News today. And that starts at 4.30 a.m. Uh, we'll preach a little patience though as these numbers have been very slow to come in in yeah. both Macomb County and Wayne County and that's why uh, that hotly uh, very closely watched hot race in the 13th still so few numbers to report tonight much more to come here at 11